What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we're putting two of the best $99 rods up against each other in a review slash comparison. We're talking about the Shimano SLX versus the Daiwa Tatula XT. So we'll start off by taking a look at each rod individually and discussing its features. From there, we're gonna move into the head-to-head -head comparison, taking a look at number one, feel and hand, number two, the whole action, power, and sensitivity of the rod, and number three, the different applications I see for each different line of rods after getting them out on the water and using them. So enough yapping, let's take a look. All right, let's start off by taking a look at the Shimano SLX-A casting rod. So a little bit different from the previous version. I do have the other version as well, and I'll kind of show you some side-by-side -side comparisons. But I've been happy with both of them. The old one was the 7.2 Heavy. I used that mainly for frogging, a few other things. But um, it was a nice rod, and I think there's some nice little upgrades uh, with this one. I especially like the look better. They made it a little bit, you know, fancier, a little bit more high class with the, the blue and the SLX there. They've got some really nice-looking wraps around the guides. You know, just kind of gussy it up a little bit. But overall, um, the rod is pretty slick. You know, nothing super fancy about it. Nothing too crazy, you know, visually uh, is what I'm talking about. Kind of your standard, you know, the EVA grips. It's got some cool looking kind of carbon wrap and stuff. But um, I think decent upgrades over the old model. Speaking of the models, this one has quite a few in the lineup. Nine total for the casting four different cranking models, and then two for the swim bait. Um, this isn't even including the spinning, this is just the casting. So they've got a number of different uh, you know, sizes, powers, actions, uh, to fit what you need, what you're looking to do with a $99 rod. These rods have a 24 ton blank, which is pretty common at this price point. Titanium oxide guides, and the guides, the thing that I really like about these is they're not super micro going all the way up. I'll give you a closer look here and you can see they're more of this like mid to small-ish, I guess I would say. I really like the guide size on these because I'm not a huge fan of the super tiny itsy bitsy micro guides. Those are okay if I'm using straight fluorocarbon like casting and retrieving or you know flipping a Texas rig, but anything where I might want to use braid or especially if you want to use braid to a leader um, is a no-go with the little tiny micro guides. So I like this better, especially um, if like I said, I'm running braid on the old frog rods, um, some of them that have the real tiny micro guides on it, you can get, you know, algae and scum and stuff that's on your line stuck in those guides, especially the tip, that's the first one, and it will make it impossible to reel, and I've had it happen a couple times on micro guide rods, and that's why I've kind of shifted away from them. With a little bit bigger guides, they'll kind of get caught on the way down through multiple, so at least you can get that fish in and it doesn't, you know, completely stop it. You put slack in your line, you, you lose the fish. So now each company gets into their fancy marketing terms. With this, Shimano calls it the DIA Flash Technology, diagonally wrapped carbon tape, uh, in opposite directions for better pulling power. What does that mean to all us nerds? Well, starting from the very bottom, you can see that cross kind of carbon 45 degree wrap goes all the way up and you can feel it. It's kind of this like a little bit larger, kind of like tiny ridges you can feel in it until you get to that first guide, then it's just your smooth carbon. So the whole deal with it is it's supposed to add lifting power and strength here through the bottom of the rod up to that first guide uh, to help not break it. Most of the brakes I have are up by the tip, so will it matter a ton? I don't know. All right, switching sides here over to the dark side, the Daiwa Tatula XE. All my Shimano fanboys are like, oh, that's, it's Daiwa, boo. But you're gonna see some similarities here and, and a few differences. Starting off, the Tatula XT has nine total models, seven regular casting, and then two cranking models. So Daiwa says this comes with their Daiwa exclusive reel seat. It's like a JDM style reel seat, they say, which actually does look really sweet and it's comfortable in hand. Um, there's some things we're gonna compare on these fractal fit in hand, but just looking at this one overall, it looks like a more expensive rod. If I were to just pick this up uh, and put this side to side by the SLX, I think this one blows it out of the water um, and, and looks like a far more expensive rod than just 99 bucks. You can see the wrapping there all the way up. Um, they've gone with the whole black and gray slash silver kind of motif all the way. For any that know me, I'm super boring when it comes to rod colors and such. So for me, this is my preferred. Something not super flashy, black, gray, silver. I love it. Now, Daiwa says this has the X45 braiding construction, which makes it lightweight and helps resist twist and give greater lifting power. Sounds familiar, huh? Well, as you can see here, as we get up past like where the, all the rod specs and everything are, get up past that, you can see that 45 degree braiding Pretty similar, huh? And it stops at that first guide. From there, it's just the regular wrap and it does feel like they have some sort of glue or something over it. 
Now when I looked at these, this one is lighter. So I put both of them on the scale. The SLX comes in at 4.7, 4.8 I think when I uh, weighed it. This one comes in at 4.2. Now, I forgot to mention here that this is the seven foot medium. So those are a little bit, there's a little bit, blah, 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 blah. there is a little bit less material on this one because the SLX that I got is the seven two medium heavy. And putting them side by side here, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera. You can see the SLX is a bigger rod around. Um, and I thought it was gonna weigh more, substantially more than the XT, but not too much. They're both under five ounces, which is definitely respectable at, at 99 bucks, I think. Both rods have the same type of hook keeper, this little tiny loop. The XT has it on top. The SLX has it just on the bottom, just in front of your real tightening nut there. Now remember the whole guide talk? This one does have some larger, kind of the medium sized guides until you start to get out to the tip. Um, the last few in the tip are not extremely micro, but they're definitely on that, that small side. Not crazy micro, but to me on the verge of kind of what I like, I just do not like the super, super tiny ones. They're okay. Um, but this would be on the edge of like what I like for small little tiny guides. So, and with those, it does have some of the Fuji components you can see there on the real tightening nut. And those guides are the Fuji aluminum oxide or alkanite um, inserts inside the actual, the piece of guide there. All right, now that we've gone over the features of each rod, let's move into the head to head comparison, starting with the fit and hand. And I think I have to give an edge to the SLX rod. I know, I'm kind of a uh, behind the scenes, quiet Daiwa fan. I really like Daiwa stuff, but I use everything. That's the fun part about my channel is, you know, I can go through different stuff, try different rods and reels. Um, and I thought for sure the Tattoo was gonna be the more comfortable rod, but this one locks in my hand better. The Shimano locks in hand. And one thing I've noticed, this is so hard to see, I'm gonna have to put this upside down. When the reel trigger, the front of it is at or past the thumb bar of the reel. If this trigger gets too far back, it's too much of a stretch for my pinky. And it's like some, some people don't hold the rod like this. Y'all know I kind of cup the, the reel like this, put my finger up here, I feel the line when I'm reeling in. For most things, you know, for some stuff like a jerk bait and such, I'll put my finger here. But a lot of people must fish like this because some companies it doesn't seem like they care about how far that trigger is back. But if I really want to lock it in my hand, the SLX is more comfortable. I also like, you'll know I'm a fan of having a smooth reel tightening nut because when my finger is laying there, I don't want something sharp that's gonna be rubbing against it, you know, eating away at my finger. Um, this is super comfortable to lock in hand and fish all day, whether it's a moving bait, whether I'm working like a Texas rig, bouncing it up and down. Um, this one did it all in hand and fit really, really well. Now it is just slightly tip heavy. I know this isn't the best way to show you and there's a bunch of people who are gonna say, oh, well, this test doesn't matter. It depends what reel you have on it. I get it. Just to kind of give you an idea, it's out here a little bit past the reel tightening nut. So I notice when I hold it, it is a bit tip heavy, which for me doesn't matter if I'm fishing like Texas rigs and stuff, cause I'll work it up, kind of let that fall down. Or if you're working anything with the tip down, like a jerk bait, top water, um, it really doesn't matter at all. But for me, I don't notice a huge difference. I, you know, I'll use bigger pike rods or musky rods and those things are night and day difference. You pick up any bass rod and you're like, oh my gosh, this thing is super light. So now switching over to the Tatula XT, it's not an uncomfortable hold. I don't want you to get that um, sort of vibe from me saying this, but you can see the trigger is back a bit farther compared to the back of the reel. So I notice for this one, when I put it in hand and grab it, it doesn't lock as well. I mean, it's still fine, it works, but I notice this is just a little bit farther back. So it kind of pushes my pinky back. So as I'm holding, it's kind of taking my pinky and pushing it back there to get around the back of this real trigger. By the end of this video, I'm gonna have the tip of this rod broke, I think. But anyway, that's how it fits in this one. Maybe not as solid of a hole, but definitely not un uncomfortable to fish all day. Um, for me, I would rather have this as a cast and retrieve, which is what I used it for. I did do a little bit of like weightless stick baits and Senkos and such. And again, if you don't hold your finger up here, it doesn't matter one single bit. This is insanely comfortable. I like how all this is smooth. Again, the reel nut on here is nice and smooth. My finger can sit there all day. Bottom side of it's nice and smooth. And it kind of like has this fatter part where it kind of flares out here that is kind of nice. So you're really like your middle finger and back finger there. It's not too skinny. You can hold it like that. So that feels really good. If I'm not putting my finger up here, if I'm just casting or reeling with this one, I like it a lot. Okay, so moving over to the action, power, and sensitivity of each rod. And this is gonna be kind of up to the person because some people may feel one and they say, this feels more, comfor more comfortable than the other. Therefore, they're fishing it maybe a little bit better and it feels more sensitive versus one that's not as comfortable in your hand. You're fumbling with it. Maybe you're missing bites. I don't know. I've had people where I'm like, I really like this rod, it's sensitive. 
the next person's like, I don't like it, I don't feel this, that, and the other. So take this with a grain of salt, but I will say for the action and power of each of these, they fit to what's explained. So this is the 7.2, medium heavy, extra fast. And when I do the bin test on this, when I was fishing different baits on it, um, I even fished some moving baits and stuff, generally like a softer rod. Um, this was not that. This is pretty close to an extra fast, what I would say. Um, I did throw a Texas rig and stuff on it. Worked great for that. Um, you know, if you can get away with going braid to a leader, if you like to do that, braid always ups the sensitivity if you're really, really worried about that. But again, this just locked so well in my hand that I had no problems fishing this all day, whether from, you know, bouncing a Texas rig, casting, retrieving, I was skipping with this, which generally, like I said, I like a little bit softer rod for that, but um, length, power, all of it felt good and worked for what, to me, they labeled it as what this should be. Switching over to the Tattoo XT, same thing. Seven foot, medium power, fast action. Doing the bend test on it and everything, it's pretty close to a fast to me. It fished that way. I felt like this was a little bit more sensitive. Again, could have been in my head, could have just been the day I was fishing it. Um, again, I don't like how my finger doesn't rest here as well. That was definitely not as comfortable. I felt myself fishing with it like this more, with my finger to the side but it was still good and sensitive. Um, like I said, I used it for stick bait um, with braid. That could have been part of the reason why it felt better for a while. I fished some moving baits on it. I kind of you know went back and forth different things. I think this would be a really good moving bait rod for something with a smaller hook, some of my underspins, some of the smaller spinner baits and swim jigs and stuff like single hook moving baits, um, like smaller chatter baits. I think this would be a really good rod for otherwise like weightless plastics. Um, I think this one would kick butt. You could also get away with some cranks and, and stuff, but that's kind of where I would put this. And again, it fit right where I thought as a seven foot medium. It's not overly soft or overly stiff. Um, I liked it. So for the whole second round of action, power, sensitivity, I put them pretty even. I call it a draw. Okay, the third piece to talk about is applications. And you might think, well, I wanna talk more about how you fished it and all these other things. Well, when you go to buy a rod, what are you thinking normally? Like for me, I'm thinking if I need a new rod, I want it to do this, you know? I want, maybe I want a specific one, or I want one to take bank fishing so I can do, you know, these three type of things with it. Oftentimes, for me anyway, I'm trying to think, what am I gonna do with this rod? Uh, now, some people might like a, a lineup with a whole bunch more rods because you get more options. Some people often feel like that's a gimmick. Like if they have a bunch of, um, technique specific. It's just a way for companies to try to get them to buy more. I personally like more options uh, because if I'm looking for something specific, like in this one, the Tattoola XT, I was thinking, gosh, it looks like a nice, slim, small rod. <clears throat> I was actually going to get this as a jerkbait rod. Guess what? They don't have anything under seven foot in the XT. So like I already kind of touched on in the last piece, if you're looking for a shorter rod, if you like, you know, 6'10", 6'8", something like that, you're not getting that in this one. Um, for what I was using this for, like I said, a lot of my moving baits and stuff for this medium power, I liked it a lot. Um, it's got a couple cranking models. I think they're both seven foot, medium and a medium heavy. Um, so really just depends, you know, what you're looking for that does cover most of the bases. And personally, most of the time I'm fishing a seven foot, seven two, like that's kind of my all time favorite. But if you want something shorter for top water, jerk baits, that kind of stuff, seven foot's as small as it goes. With the SLX, as we talked about before, this does have a number of different options. I think there's two that are 610. Um, so if you wanted a shorter, you know, jerk bait or top water rod, you can get that in this one. It does also have the swim bait. It's got a couple more cranky models. So overall, um, the line has more versatility. Now to some people that may not matter at all, but I always like to kind of cover that because um, if you if you like a certain type of rod or feeling rod, like for example, Dobbins, the Caden lineup tends to run a little soft. I've, I've been able to use a couple of those and really like it. I tend to like a softer rod if you like something more crisp. Um, you know, just kind of depends on the person again. But I like to go over that because if you're looking for something specific, it's good to kind of know, okay, what does each one have? Okay, so what are my closing thoughts on these two rods? Well, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I like the fit in hand of the SLX, and I like that it's got a few more options. However, I liked the uh, Tattoola, the looks of it better. I would rather carry that around. Um, fit in hand was good, not quite as good. I would give it an edge to, to sensitivity for me, but again, that's gonna kind of depend on the person. So again, they're honestly both about even. I don't think you can go bad picking either. So do me a favor, comment below and let me know if you'd like to see more head-to-head -head matchups, if there's a, a reel or a rod or a couple of them that you'd like to see matched up against each other. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Gear Talk is probably some of my favorite videos to do. So comment below, I'd really like to hear what you have to say. Now today's subscribe fusion friend goes to Andrew. He said the, uh, the beard's looking good, looks like it's in a transition phase. Man, uh, the beard's gone through I don't know how many different iterations. Right now it's just in 
grow out uh, beast uh, mode here, just kind of doing its own thing. It'll be time for a shave once summer comes up because it'll be hot. But for now, just letting it do its own things. So thank you, Andrew. And thank you everybody else that continues to watch and support me, even if I do have an ugly fake looking beard. I appreciate you all. So that's enough for me. Gotta edit. Thanks for watching. Until next time.